Okay. I want to talk about red-haired mummies. Where's the red hair coming from? And um, if you talk to somebody in academia, you know, the first thing they cite you is this term oxidation. But they can't really explain it um, real well. Um, I'm going to read uh, just briefly from a paper that specifically talks about the study of uh, post-mortem hair. Now, first of all, this paper comes from the NCBI uh, database, which is the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Um, this is a website that's part of the United States National Library of Medicine, and um, that is a branch of the National Institute of Health. And the NCBI is located in Bethesda, Maryland, and it was founded in 1988 through the legislation sponsored by Senator Claude Pepper. And the NCBI um, houses a series of databases rel uh, relevant to biotechnology and biomedicine. Some of the major databases are GenBank for DNA sequences and PubMed. Now there's other things as well, but um, there's some papers on here. And I did find a paper and I want to read from it because I'm trying to track down where this whole um, red hair after death coming uh, from the soil or from the sun, you know, came from. And I just, I never seem to get a consistent answer from any so-called expert. So I found this article called Interpreting Biological Degradative Processes Acting on Mammalian Hair in the Living and the Dead, which, which ones are taphonomic. Now, I'm not an expert on this. I never claim to be. This is just something I'm interested in and trying to learn more about. So let's see. If we scoot down on this article to an area about uh, natural or acquired hair color, sec section H. And I just, I'm just going to read this. Okay, archaeological hair samples, human and animal, frequently exhibit red coloration. Post-mortem or post-depositional color change to hair, hairs may be attributed to a number of factors, such as photodegradation of pigment granules in sunlight or the oxidation of melanin pigments, uh, pigment granules over millennia. Microscopical examination of a hundred-year-old truss of scalp hair from an aboriginal youth revealed hairs that most likely showed the effects of photodegradation of pigment granules. Pigment granules in the oldest part of the hair, tip end or distal shaft, were significantly lighter in color in comparison to the younger part of the hair. Electronic supplementary material, figure S7A. Uh, in an anti-mortem context, other factors can impact on bleaching of pigment granules, example chemicals. But in the case of the aboriginal youth, it is reasonable to assume that the older parts of the hair have had more exposure to sunlight. Wolfram et al. noted that while all pigmented hair lightens when exposed to sunlight, the effect was most notice, uh, notable at low latitudes and in high humidity environments. Rowe, in his study of biodeterioration of hair color, observed that exposure of white, unpigmented dog hair to relatively high humidity resulted in the development of a distinct yellow-orange coloration. Further investigation of these hairs revealed the presence of brown, fungal, hyphae, and spores on the surface of, of the hair, a phenomenon also seen in extinct megafauna hairs that caused the shaft of the hairs to become orange or red in color. Although the chemical reactions and their effects on hair pigments undoubtedly account for some of the red coloration of hairs, they cannot be the sole cause. Kreft found that hairs devoid of pigmentation 
also exhibited this red coloration, which he attributed to the alteration of the chemical structure of keratin as demonstrated in animal, ancient and modern animal hairs. Electronic supplementary material figure F7, B, C, B and C. Irrespective of the cause, red hair on or near remains should be thoroughly investigated to determine if the color is natural or acquired. Naturally, red scalp hair, unlike brown or black hair, usually shows medial, central, distribution of pigment granules within the shaft. Electronic supplementary material, figure 7, um, S7D. Okay, I'm going to leave the link. Okay, let me just clarify that again. Irrespective of the cause, red hair on or near remains should be thoroughly investigated to determine if the color is natural or acquired. So don't give me this nonsense that uh, everything is attributable to um, age or being in the soil. Um, you can't even tell me if it's the, if it's um, the fungus doing it. Is it um, the sunlight doing it? Was it done after death? Was it done before? You cannot sit there and um, systematically and gen uh, generally say that every red-haired mummy is due to um, color change after death. This paper says that you have to examine that hair to determine if it was natural or acquired. And it's a natural red scalp hair, unlike brown or black hair, usually shows medial distribution of pigment granules within the shaft. And I know personally my darker hair um, basically goes red due to the sunlight in the summer, and that's called the summer reds. Um, some people have blonde highlights. A, a Caucasoid hair could get blonde highlights, um, or, or um, auburn Caucasoid hair could go more red in the summer. And um, that's due to oxidation and from the sunlight. But um, this, this nonsense of just, oh, it's just automatically every mummy that's red hair is just because it changed after death is, is just nonsense. This paper is telling you that no matter what the cause, you have to examine every case to determine if that color is natural or acquired. You have to look at the whole scalp. And then I would even venture to say, you know, you have to look at things like, was henna used? Was this um, sun that, uh, that did it? Did it happen by something in the ground? Was it the fungus? So it, it's, it's not just um, something you could generally say that happens to anything in the ground. And what about those in the desert where there's no moisture or, or buried in a cave wrapped up away from the sunlight? Everything has to be looked at individually and there has to be some DNA samples taken to make conclusions. So there you have it. I, I'm going to continue on researching this, but I just wanted to um, put this very interesting article up. Thank you.